Well, well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another week of our webinar series, Parenting Tips. We want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, well, today we're gonna talk about uh, the transitioning from screen time to safe socializing, face-to-face -face safe socializing. So the term socialization refers to a general process, uh, but so socialization always takes place in specific contexts. Um, socialization is culturally specific. People in different cultures are socialized differently to hold different beliefs and, and values and to behave in different ways. But although cultural differences, the role of socialization is uh, to acquaint individuals with the norms of a given social group or, or society, and it prepares individuals to participate in a group by illustrating the expectations of that group. So, so socialization is very important for children uh, who begin the process at home with family and continue it at school. They are taught what will be expected of them as they mature and become full members of society. So what are the benefits of socialization? Uh, among uh, the benefits of it, we have social interaction helps young children to start to develop their sense of self. Uh, it helps children to learn what others expect from them. And it is effective long-term. By playing with other children, they learn skills that stick with them for their whole life sharing, setting boundaries, and problem solving. Uh, all come from socializing and interacting. Children learn to have empathy for other people, to recognize when their friends are sad or mad or even happy. And kids eventually will start to use these skills at home with their parents, siblings, or even pets. So, Socializing in times of COVID-19. Of the many ways COVID-19 has changed our lives, we can say physical distancing is among uh, the, the toughest for many people to bear. Humans are social creatures, hardwired to create touch and interaction. And for kids, as we mentioned before, socializing is a crucial part of growing up. The pandemic has brought this to a pause. We will like now, I'm gonna share a, a poll uh, to know a little bit of how are you coping with physical distancing? And uh, we're going to, I'm gonna share the poll here. So, okay. So um, among the questions, because I think that when we record uh, the webinar, uh, the, the poll is not shared in the video, I'm going to read some of the questions so you can have an idea of what are we asking the participants, the live participants. Are you following social distancing, quarantine guidelines? Uh, what is the impact of quarantine in your children's socializing? Uh, are you allowing your children to spend time with friends face to face? How are you letting them see their friends? At, at your house, at, at other people's house, why a uh, walking or hiking at the beach or through virtual play dates? Uh, another question is, do you believe your children are following social distancing when they see their friends? Uh, what is the reason you allow that contact? Is it because you don't believe there is a real risk or you feel bad for them or because it's easier for you to let them? And the final question is, do your kids really understand the risks to, your, uh, to you or other people if they are exposed? Okay, 
So those are some of the questions we're sharing in our poll. And if you are having the opportunity to see this webinar, this recorded webinar in our YouTube channel, these are some questions you may think about and help you reflect on how are you man managing this process of coming back to the new normal. So, a day in the life of an average child will have meant actual classrooms, baseball games, soccer games, birthday parties, and many other activities that you can name endlessly. There will have been, you know, jokes at, at, at the playground and whispers in hallways, cafeterias, gyms, and in school buses. As we said before, uh, time with other children is a crucial piece of growing up. Relationships with peers are how kids learn about cooperation, trust, and loyalty, as well as how not to just receive support from their parents, but also give it to others. Thanks to the coronavirus pandemic and the measures that parents, schools, and governments have put in place to limit its spread, millions of children across the world are missing out on friendship. And this brings us to the question, what about our kids' social skills post uh, lockdown, right? So let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. So, uh, Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we were here. Um, this is something that, that you might be asking, like some parents might be worried about their kids' social post-lockdown skills, right? And I don't know why it's not. Sorry. Good afternoon, welcome. Um, okay, I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, can you... It takes a few minutes to load. Yeah. Okay, where we were talking about the benefits of socialization and um, how our lives changed a little bit with, you know, COVID and the pandemic. And we were here, um, we, were, we were saying that, uh, you know, socializing is a crucial part uh, for children growing up and that the relationship with their peers, uh, it's important to teach them uh, about cooperation, trust, uh, loyalty, uh, and, and as well as how not just receive support from their parents, but also give it to others. Um, and uh, well, we were saying that this this might bring us to the question that what uh, about about our kids' social skills post lockdown if they are going to be affected or not? Some parents might be uh, concerned about this, right? So. Uh, being isolated at home for months is very different for an eight-year-old than it is for an 18-year-old. Uh, even kids of the same age have different interests, needs, and personalities, and their responses to quarantine will be different too. Uh, some children who, who dealt, for example, with bullying or social anxiety prior to the pandemic might have uh, found social distancing to be a relief. 
And not everybody, everyone, for example, in middle school or high school, not everyone actually will want it to go to, to prom, for example. But others, uh, but others uh, with mental health issues or a less than happy home environment are more, more likely to suffer from being out of school. Uh, and it is age dependent, but more so it depends on what actually happens to kids when they are at home. Younger kids in particular are parameters of family stress. So uh, we should pay attention if our children are presenting at this moment uh, some signals uh, because there, there, there has been you know, seven months already and um, they might be uh, showing different behaviors or symptoms that might uh, be a signal of anxiety or depression or any concerning behavior. Um, so social interactions are an important part of development through, uh, throughout childhood and spending time with peers is typically part of that process. But try not to worry too much about what they're missing right now. Several pediatricians and psychologists uh, offer reassurance about uh, the isolation many children have experienced because of COVID. And they say that children tend to be resilient and adaptable. There is, there is much to be gained from interactions with parents, siblings, and even pets at home. Time alone is valuable too, okay? So they learn to be alone. They, lay to, they, they learn to play uh, on their own. And this is, this is very important too. And connection through technology, uh, like hanging out or playing games, through video chats can fill in some of the blanks uh, caused by this pandemic. Uh, even without peer interaction for a while, kids can still develop socially and emotionally in ways that will prepare them to pursue uh, real world friendships when they, when, when, when they can reassume. So with, now that we are experiencing more flexible social measures, you might be asking yourself like, how do we do this, right? How do we transition into the new normal without risking our safety and health? Is there any safe way to see family or friends while following physical distancing guidelines? Well, there's no magic answer to that question, many experts say. Uh, in a perfect in infectious disease fighting model, uh, everybody will stay home and socialize only with their cohabitants, right? But the realities of our of human existence are more complex than that. Some experts are advocating for a harm reduction approach to social distancing, uh, an idea that, that is focused on minimizing the negative consequences of potentially risk behaviors. And that will mean teaching people how to see their loved ones as safely as possible, rather than telling them not to socialize, not to go out, got, go out at all, and hoping against proof and human nature that they will listen to those recommendations and they, they will follow them. So uh, how can we accomplish this transition for screen time, virtual scenarios to face-to-face -face interactions? At the beginning, convincing your child to go out and try some outdoors activities might be, you know, a challenge. Some children feel safe at home, especially when they've heard that the outside world might be dangerous due to COVID-19. But as long as you're supportive and give them time to transition smoothly, at the same time, you accompany them and model safe behaviors, they will become more confident to retake their routines outside home. So children are surprisingly resilient as long as they have at least one supporting adult in their lives. If you are modeling these uh, resilient behaviors, they will cope with this new experience of going out home in a better way. The most important thing that all children need is a sense of safety. The younger the child, uh, the more that sense of safety comes from adults who care for them. Children are very reliant upon consistent, predictable experience. We have said this many, many times in, in previous webinars. 
So preparing your child for going out and trying to explain how would it look like or, or where are you going might help them transition into the new experience smoothly. It's like creating that expectation, helping them understand that there's going to be a lot of people wearing masks, even though, of course, they are, they are well informed because they see uh, they, they can see the news and, and, and information on the web. Helping them understand how things have changed outside might help them uh, to cope with that new environment and to be less shocking for them. Um, adults should be mindful of how their own conversations and behaviors might impact kids. Adults should, should take measures to, to, to manage their own anxiety and stress which will reduce the, the overall stress level at home and provide a good role model for kids in maintaining safety behaviors. Another recommendation is to take into consideration their interests and opinions. Try to ask them, what, what do you miss about socializing in person or going to school or par participating in your extracurricular activities? Their responses will give you a clear idea of what exactly is is that they need. Remember to validate their feelings and experience. Parents can acknowledge uh, those those feelings, uh, adjusting to all of this change, uh, saying that adjusting to all of these changes can be really hard, uh, as well as retaking face-to-face -face social interactions might be challenging at the beginning. So try to validate those those feelings and emotions that I, that they share with you. Uh, family safety bubbles are a great way to start. We've, we've heard about these family bubbles a lot in, in, in the news and getting outside as a family is a great way to spend time together. Like take advantage of this time to bond over games and activities that you will all enjoy. For example, uh, you, can, you can hold a nature scavenger hunt or start a nature collection, hunting for plants, trees, uh, watching birds, collecting rocks, uh, see how many items children can find on a list or gather objects to, to add to a collection. That, that might be an idea. Uh, like another idea might be like leave a trail organized with parents of your children's friends since we are, we have to keep in mind, you know, the, the family bubbles and the, and the physical distancing. You can organize with, with other parents um, like secret spy missions, like one family goes on a walk with you know, on, on one way, drawing arrows and, and letters along the way to spell out like a secret message while the other family uh, go and follow the, the arrows along the way to record the letters in the message. Those are types of games that you can play with other families and staying apart from, from, from each other. Um, playing, playing ball, kicking a soccer ball, or playing catch together can be fine if you are apart from each other and avoid sharing sports equipment with others outside your household and avoiding contact, contact sports. So uh, reminding children about expected behaviors and point out when they forget about safety measures. There are many resources well illustrated. Remember that younger children needs visual, visual aid. Older ones, you can have these conversations with them, but always rem reminding them about those expected behaviors, washing their hands, keeping their masks on, uh, taking, you know, keeping their shoes uh, away. Um, the other day I, I worked with a, with a child in, at the clinic and he was so prepared with his alcohol spray and everything. And he took out his iPad because he wanted to show me something. And he took out his iPad from his backpack and he immediately starts spraying alcohol around us. That, that, that sent me a message that he was very well trained and that parents at home are taking care of letting, even though this was one of, the, of, of his first first uh, going out experiences going back to the to the clinic uh to my office uh i can i can see that he was he was well prepared to manage those new behaviors that we all need to put in place in the outside world um so 
benefits of going outside. Getting outside provides more than a fun break for children and teens. It is also good for their physical and mental health and development. Children and teens who spend time enjoying nature can be physically and mentally healthier. Uh, children that, that play Children, children can play harder outdoors than indoors, especially without, you know, the structure of a, of a, of a, of, a, of the uh, restricted environment because something can be broken or something like that. Uh, children spe especially need opportunities to move. Stress and depression are lower for all people who spend time in nature. Children show increased focus and reduced symptoms of, of for example, attention def deficit uh, disorder when they are more exposed to nature and outdoors. They are also, they become also more engaged in learning. Playing outside promotes more curiosity, creativity, and critical thinking. Studies have found uh, that children who spend more time in nature exploration had improved learning outcomes. And, uh, it impacts with more positive behavior. Research has found that when children spend more time in nature, in nature settings, they have less anger and aggression and impulse, impulse control also improves. Uh, this might be especially important when normal routines have changed for children. So what do experts say? Dr. Jack, Shankov is a pediatrician and early childhood development expert at Harvard uh, Center on the Developing Child. And he says, it's really important for parents not to catastrophize and panic. There's no evidence that even a few months of social distancing is going to have a long-term effect on children's development. Instead, parents can take comfort in the value of relationships within their own homes and the study suggests that secure attachments with parents set children up to have stronger friendships, okay? It says that if we weren't able to adjust, we have gone extinct like the dinosaurs, okay? We wouldn't be able to survive because our environment is always changing. You can find more about this topic and uh, through the additional resources we posted in the, in the, in the counselor's uh, website in the section called resources. There are two interesting articles uh, regarding this topic of going out and helping children transitioning from you know, the virtual setting to a face-to-face -face new reality. And I would like to end with this quote from Dr. Seth Polak, he says, Having parents who worry excessively about what their kids are missing out on is likely more damaging than missing out on experiences. So I would like to encourage you to decrease that level of, of, of concern about what their children are missing right now due to this pandemic situation and try to focus more on providing them day by day opportunities to develop new skills and learn new things. So now if you have uh, questions or comments, more, more than welcome. Um, there's a question in the chat. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh -huh. It says, my biggest concern is the iPad because it has become a necessary tool for my daughter to be able to socialize. How do we balance? Yeah, as, as um, in general, I will say, you know, that uh, we need to be, um, we need to take this step by step. Uh, I always give this example to parents, like pre pretend that you are watching your favorite movie or your favorite pro TV show on the on on the on TV, and then somebody comes and and unplug the TV or change the channel or turn it up or remove it from you. How you're gonna feel? You're gonna feel frustrated. You're gonna feel like what's going on here, right? And probably that will upset you. Now imagine that you take away out of the sudden these resources to your sh from your children who are being like, who has been using them as 
entertainment, connection, tool for learning. By now, technology has so many uh, meanings to our children that taking them out of a salon can be stuck in. So I will say you can start making changes on your agreements or rules or, or time, screen time. You can start reducing them uh, to, you know, you can, you can let the child know why, why are you doing this? Because now I would like you to go out and do some exercise or play outside or because we are, I don't know, starting um, lessons of different sports. I, I've heard some parents have started taking their children back to the pool for swimming classes, back to tennis classes, back to, to, you know, to different activities that they used to do. But that needs, as I said before, that needs um, a warning of what's, what's next, what's coming up. But what's coming uh, up next? Like telling the children, this is what's going to happen next week. So since we are going to this place, we are not going to be, you are not going to be able to use the iPad as, as much as you used to do. So what do you think if we, instead of from this time to this time, we adjust it to a more, you know, it will depend on each family and, and, and the times and, and agreements. But I will say, create the expectation, let them know what's coming, what's coming next so they can be ready for that transition. Not just remove that out of a sudden from one day to the, to the other because this has been their, I don't know, their, uh, their, their best friends for a while. Uh -huh. And if there is mismanagement, for example, while in class using the iPad to play in the middle of these circumstances. Yeah, and this is something we've been, uh, co uh, we, we've been uh, hearing a lot from parents and from teachers. Children are not making, you know, the right choices to, to, to follow the, the classroom agreements or, or the teacher's guidelines regarding the use of, of technology while they are in class. So uh, this is something that needs to be approached immediately as, as you realize that this is happening, either if, if it's because the teacher reported the situation or because you noticed that. Uh, two weeks ago, we were talking about um, natural consequences of behavior and I would say like if, if you notice that your child is misusing the technology, uh, if, if, for example, if they're playing while they're supposed to be paying attention to the class, what do you think might be the, a natural or logical consequence for that? So it might be like, okay, since you were playing during class time, now this time that you were supposed to play in the afternoon when you finish your, your school responsibilities, I'm going to take away this time from that, that session. So if, if the child plays from 4 to 6 p.m. in the afternoon after classes, then you take away uh, a period of time. You can shorten, I don't know, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, according to, to how long uh, he got this. He or she got distracted from the from the learning, and that could be a natural, natural, natural or logical consequence for that type of behavior. They have to become aware that this is not the right thing to do, and and this happens in the in the in the in the real you know in the presential face to face scenario. Is it those students that are not paying attention to the teacher because they're playing? with a pencil or they're distracted be, because of something uh, in the table, what are the consequences of that? You're not paying attention to the, to the instructions. You're, you're not following you know, the, the agreements or guidelines. So those behaviors first need to be pointed out and then needs to have a, a logical consequence for them. Okay, yeah, uh, and, and coming back to that, I'd say like, Agreements are the fundamental part of this because if you have agreements put in place, 
you can come back to the agreement and they know that what is expected at home, what is the agreement, what is the rule. And if you are breaking that consciously, because you know there is an agreement, but you decide to go against the agreement, you have to, to accept the consequence of your action. And they tend to, to, to manage that in a better, better way that if in, we impose uh, consequences for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think we are also, uh -huh. I'm sorry, Ms. Batista, but also just, just a reminder to parents too that pretty soon, uh, maybe February, we will be returning to a hybrid model in school. So this is the perfect time to start preparing students to be able to socialize, to be able to take the necessary security measures to be able to stay safe. Because sooner or later, they're going to be exposed to being outside of their home and with other children. Exactly. And we are going to be, you know, uh, dealing with uh, constant reminders of, you know, keep your mask on, go and wash your hands. and. We, we need to start preparing them for that, for that transition. Um, I just, a, 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 a week ago, I started working with children again, as I said before in the clinic. And, and I, I've started noticing that some children are more like aware of, of, of the expected behaviors, but others, because of their impulsivity and you know, lack of, 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 of self-control, they need more reminders about the expected behaviors in uh, settings that are, you know, outside their home. So uh, if we start providing them opportunities right now, preparing them and, 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 and as parents, you have the opportunity to watch them, how do they behave and um, uh, fix whatever needs to be fixed right now, when they come back to school, it's gonna be easier. It's going to be easier for them and it's going to be easier for everyone around them. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I'm so glad that you were here. Thank you, Ms. Rosario. You too enjoy the break and see you. And I think we are coming back in November 19 with another webinar for younger learners, lower elementary. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Take care. Ciao. Bye. Okay. <laughs>